Welcome back, everyone. Once again, I am your teacher. You may call me the architect. And you've all once again been called back for another class into the lore and origins behind the worlds you exist within. I apologize for the sudden end of our last class. Someone tried something rash that needed my immediate attention. But, however, I quickly diffused the situation. <laughs> I've been playing the game way longer than they have. <laughs> Anyhow, today's lesson will be on something very important to the history of the world of Arcanan. Yes, today's class will be on the origin of the half-bloods within the multiverse. Be sure to note the involvement of a few key characters that have appeared in previous classes. Diving into it, if you turn to page 57 in your books, you will see that there is a diagram of what makes a half-blood, essence and anatomy. Half-bloods of the world of Arcanan have a rather recent history, actually. At least to a being who has been around as long as I have. They only began to spread across the continent of Altera about 432 years ago, well after the creation of Arcanan. You see, that's because they were created after humanity had already existed in that realm. Allow me to explain. About three centuries after the dawn of creation of Arcanan, humans were still barely civil, just starting to form society as the development of that world began. The Creator had made the world and left it into the care of the Seven Divines. However, the Divines are also creatures of free will, much like humanity, well able to have curiosities and actions based on their own desires. While the other six ruled in their domains, one of them had a certain need for knowledge that had driven him to some extreme scientific questions. That divine is Leo of nature. Leo, much like his older brothers Daz and Rex, saw humanity as savages, lesser beings with little consequence to their existence. So he wondered, what if he were to play God and create his own species and nature? As the divine of everything natural and grown, he thought it his right to test the boundaries of natural law. With that in mind, he began his process of creating a new type of being. He saw the designs of himself, humans, and animals, and much like the artwork of a lazy artist, decided to skip a few steps and use the work of the creator as a base for his new design, tracing, if you will, existing work. That was his folly. He decided to mix the designs of humans and most types of animals. Note that he used mostly reptiles, birds, aquatic creatures, and mammals to achieve this. Once his creation process was done, he gave them form in that world. Bipedal humanoid creatures with overlapping characteristics of animals. For example, a human with bird wing appendages sprouting from their back, a human with wolf ears, claws, teeth, and a tail, or a human with the lower half of a fish that they can shift into legs at will. <laughs> Leo, taking pride in his ability to create and the knowledge he's accumulated, thought that he created a being that rivaled the creations of his creator and set them free into the world of Arcanan below. He intended for them to be called the Brackish. However, his knowledge was not as great as that of his creator, and as such he made a slight oversight. There are genetic repercussions for mixing two existing beings that aren't exactly quite compatible. While, yes, he did make a species that could act as humans and have their own physical traits of superior animals, the combining of these two instincts 
has rash consequences. With many different subspecies of half-blood, they began to multiply, as all living things do, and that is where the genetic oversight comes into play. Leo didn't think that so many different combinations of genes and DNA would have an effect due to his ironic god complex. Therefore, when his creations began to multiply, certain anomalies occurred. The mixing of certain subspecies led with the creation of what humans dubbed half-dragons and many other mythical look-alikes. And soon, much like a foreign life brought from a new, untouched environment, the half-bloods began to populate as the humans did. But, since the humans arrived first and somewhat feared the abilities of these new beings, they began to dominate and subdue them. Thus, leading down to the many years to the Four Kingdom Society of Altera and Montel that you know today. And another small effect of the Half-Bloods. Due to their patchwork and incomplete genetic structures, there are certain rare instances of small genetic mutations within the realms of their appearance, at least. For example, there is an extremely rare chance that the offspring of two Half-Bloods' parents could end up with the features neither parent contains. Say, two avian half-bloods with white wings of a dove or a sparrow procreate. Due to the unfinished nature of the half-blood genetics caused by Leo, the child may be born with the colorful wings of a scarlet macaw, the red, green, and blue parrot bird from Earth. That is the effect of what I call rare gene anomaly in the half-blood species, at least. And it can range from the smallest things to the most robust and extreme physical differences in all subspecies. The fur of a bear, the horns of a bull, the wings of a dragon, etc. It is extremely rare, however. Most will never encounter a person who has a rare gene anomaly. But still, I feel it important to mention in this class. No one knows how this is possible. It defies the natural law. Which is why it is Leo's greatest mistake. The creation of this new life went against his own domain. However, the creator saw only new and precious life, and felt nothing but love and compassion for the beings. That is why they still exist today. There are many different half-bloods in the world of Arcanon, most that appear as demi-human, but others a bit more... eccentric. Hm. Thank you for attending my class, and as always, do with this information as you will. And you are dismissed.